All right. We are live with Kokomo here. Thank you so much for joining us and staying up late in uh, in Germany. It's a pleasure to have you here. Um, yeah, thank you so much for participating in this strange version of the festival as well. Uh, we know that you've been here before physically. So uh, how did it feel to participate this way, to film a set and, and sort of send it in? Did you feel very much removed or, you know, did you, did you watch the set and feel somewhat involved? Well, the first point is that it felt pretty strange to see your own set when you're in the audience like this. So it was a good feeling to see us, actually, but it was pretty strange as well. Did, did you try with uh, VR goggles or glasses at all at your end, or were you just watching the, the YouTube stream? Yeah, just on, just on YouTube. We're here actually on a kind of festival as well. We are organizing a festival called Platzisch Festival in Duisburg. And you can see around maybe part of the stages here. Oh, wow. We had a festival here with uh, like 100 people in the audience. So have you, have, have you just finished your set then? Have you already played then? We weren't playing. We are the organizers. Ah, okay. Cool. So <laughs> who did you have playing? Was it post-rock or what sort of music? Actually, the last band on this stage was a hip hop band, but uh, on the other band, on the other stage in a church, is playing right now Colin from Arm Ra, a solo show. Oh, cool. Nice. Well, yeah, we have uh, Amen Ra um, performing uh, an acoustic set for us tomorrow. So that's. Uh, what, and was he. Yes. W the, the solo show, is that acoustic as well that he's performing? Yes. It's uh, together with Leonard from Arm Ra and his solo, solo show, and yeah, we missed that show because we watched Kokomo, <laughs> and uh, we were on, a, on the other stage here on the festival, <laughs> so I just had like two minutes with, uh, watching uh, Colin from Arm Ra playing in the church, and it was like really beautiful, yes, that's... Well, speaking of churches, can you tell us a little bit about the venue that you played in? Uh, that was a church. Uh, it was a bit hard to tell, I think, with some of the visuals. But um, is it an is it an abandoned church or is it still functioning? Can you let us know a little bit about that venue? Yeah, it's a, it's a cultural church. You have like some some shows there with like classic shows or, or um, yeah some some culture artist stuff. Um, and we live in in Duisburg, and we don't have any venues here in Duisburg. So we have to go in churches to play like a show like this. <laughs> did, did it feel strange to perform in there, to perform that type of music, or no one cares in Germany, anything goes? They were really open-minded towards all our ideas. So, um, and really supportive. We came there with, I don't know, hundreds of these picture frames where we built the uh, projection things. Uh, and they supported us with material and uh, we could use the church basically as long as we wanted. So um, they're really into supporting the culture. Yeah, that's that's excellent. And and the, the visuals, I know that your uh, former guitarist, I believe, was uh, putting those together for you. Can you tell us a little bit about his current involvement and, and sort of how that came together? Yeah, he's like a really good friend of us and he's doing um, stuff like that for like bigger companies, but in a very different way. So we just started to think about doing something else. And uh, yeah, this came up, he, he, he tried some stuff uh, for the first time as well. And uh, it went out pr pretty well. I really liked the visual because it was like the idea to have uh, three different places where, where something happened. So we have the the church and uh, us playing and we have that uh, projection walls where you can put see that um, visuals from woods and these uh, protests against uh, uh, police um, violence. violence and um, we had that, that third uh, like level. level where we had that visuals in in the uh, the screening uh, in, in the um, streaming uh, on top, so 
it was really cool to have like a, yeah I don't know how to say it. Um, it was a new approach for us to like merge three different levels of performance in one concert. Yeah, it was it was very well received here. It, it looked really good in the in the in the goggles. That's for sure. Um, uh, I'm just wondering uh, if you can maybe walk us through the. I, I know I know that you say uh, describe them yourselves as a instrumental band, but um, obviously there were some vis uh, some vocals in there. Um, is that a regular part of your set, or did you normally put some vocals in, uh, or, or do you normally opt for the instrumental tracks? We we have vocals on all our albums in different songs. Um, it, it depends. Sometimes we feel like there's something missing, and we fill it with vocals. And sometimes it's only instrumental music. Yeah, or sometimes it's not not missing. It's a very important part of the song. Um, so it wasn't a real choice for us to be in an instrumental band. Uh, but sometimes we just want to try to get maybe a message out from our songs or like to have more emotions in the song with screaming parts or we had that song with, uh, that, that song with Tom from Her Name Is Kala where we think there is like there has to be something a storytelling in the song or something like that so it depends we just we're not uh, fixed on being just an instrumental band. Yeah, yeah, and to go back to what you were talking about before with the uh, the footage that you had of the sort of uh, anti uh, sort of fascist, I guess, and uh, police brutality uh, footage that you had in there, is that uh, where did you source that from? Is that local from from Germany, or is that just pulled off the internet? Um, how did you choose the the video material that you used? It was pulled off the internet, um, the idea came uh, pretty close after the Black Lives Matter protest in the USA and we collected some footage to uh, yeah, add some something into the uh, projections as a contrast to the peaceful woods. Yeah, And to get that message into our set. And and did you have any input with uh, with that getting included, or was that basically uh, with your um, former guitarist deciding to put that in, or, or did you sort of give a nudge to say, can you include this footage to sort of uh, amplify the message? Yeah, it was our idea to uh, include this footage. Yeah, uh, and and uh, there was. Some <laughs> the the, um, the 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 final song I think it was sort of con concluded with some birds flying across uh, flying across the screen. Um, did that have any special meaning? Um, you know, did that link up with the the song's themes or anything like that? It, it certainly looked very very nice, but I just wonder if it had a deeper meaning at all. I I think it was because the song is uh, called Vogelmann, which means uh, Birdman. Yeah, and then there was there was a Birdman so, earlier, I think, in the in the visuals as well. Visuals. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like there's a, a nice little party going on at your side. <laughs> um, I, I think uh, we're we're slowly running out of time here, so uh, I'll just finish with a, a couple of final uh, questions. Um, obviously, you're you're hosting this. Uh, this festival here at the moment, but um, what, what's it like playing concerts in Germany at the moment? Are, are you able to perform um, to, to small crowds? And you know, do you have any concerts coming up locally? Uh, the situation in Germany is um, like like what we did tonight. So we can maximum have 100 persons in the audience, and they have to be uh, like. Was was the distance between them from about two meters, and you can just sit together with two people. So that's the situation right now in Germany, and it's uh, very difficult because you have to get an, a really big venue to play uh, a show like this. And uh, for us, it's in the moment, it's not like the way we want to do shows. So we have something planned for for November, um, maybe and some shows for, for spring next year, but at the moment it's like getting a bit down. We had like 
we were a band doing stuff for for all the time. We just uh, uh, write an album, going touring, writing the next album for the last last twelve years. So it's it's good to have that uh, that break from 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 the outside for us to get a bit down to to let's just check what where we where we are right now and what we want to do right now. So we take that break and uh, think about some stuff. And uh, for a long time, it wasn't allowed for us to rehearsal, so we couldn't also just we couldn't write any songs together. And yeah, that's the situation right now for us here in Germany. Yeah, well, hopefully that improves again soon. And we're really hoping that we can see you um, perform here in Kristiansand in Norway again, hopefully next year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We we uh, we also miss live music here as well, obviously. So uh, we think this is probably about the second best thing. Uh, this is about as best as we can get to to live music. So. We thank you so much for joining us uh, for this year's festival. Um, good luck um, with hopefully finding some more concerts in Germany and let's hope this all sort of boils over soon enough. And um, yeah, thank you for staying up late and, and talking to us tonight. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you and um, yeah, we'll hopefully see you again next year. Yeah, thank you for letting us be part in your festival and have a nice second day. Thanks a lot for all your effort. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Good night. Okay. Good night. Good night. All right. That's the uh, the end of um, uh, Friday night here at Vivid. So we hope the people out there in the internet land can join us again tomorrow. We start at uh, 1900, I believe. Um, so yeah, hopefully you can join us again tomorrow night uh, for our other four bands and thanks for tuning in. Good night.